Welcome back to another edition of the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T, but this is a special pre-draft edition of the Falcons Audible. I'm here with my guys, Dave Archer and DJ Shockley. Yes, I am, of course, Derek Rackley, and we are going to get into a lot of things that's going to happen with the NFL draft, specifically for the Atlanta Falcons. Real quick, before I let the guys talk, because I know they're chomping at the bit, it's been like three months since you guys had <laughs> a chance a to talk on this. Here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to identify the key areas that the Falcons need to focus on in the draft, at least what we think they are we're going to actually talk about who the falcons take at number eight our opinions once again we're going to take a look back at falcons free agency see where atlanta tried to improve their roster get the guys take on where they feel like those guys potentially fit in to the 2022 action on the field and then we're going to take a little dive into a sleeper pick somebody that may not be your regular household name that atlanta could pick up in maybe the third fourth fifth sixth seventh round that could potentially impact the falcons roster and their play on the field in 2022 so without further ado dj how are you man hey rick what's, what's up, up man i have seen y'all a minute man i know so good to see y'all man excited to be back baby i see you every night you come to my <laughs> house every night he's a guest <laughs> in my house after he, 11 o'clock every that. night dj has that. not just been yeah. football he has been nascar he has yeah. been golf baseball basketball you name it it's been fun man it's been fun but i'm glad to be back with y'all man. Job, job, boys, man. arch how are you with your i mean we know you are in full mode here he's got the binder i feel he is bad. ready to flip I feel, pages i thought i was trying to consolidate with my little uh my little notebook here. Archie's got a whole binder with the whole entire league in it. I feel bad. Well, Shock, you know how it is. I, you, you know, you set a bar about five, six years ago doing this, and I, I think, can I, can I taper off? For nah, the people, I will taper for the, off. For the people who can't see it, it is, it is impressive. Yeah, what's impressive least. to me, and again, you can't see this, is he's got the regular sheets of paper in the binder. I don't know how you can flip pages without ripping them out. <laughs> the loose leaf. The I just don't have that finesse. Yeah. Like when I turn the page, they just end up ripping out. But and how, Arch is and, and how he doesn't neat. do it because Arch is not a finesse guy. So, <laughs> all right, Arch. Step on the I'm gonna let you dive right okay. into the three ring binder right now as we talk about our quick reactions. Not player position group okay there's needs for the falcons but position group you feel like atlanta addresses with number eight in the first round yeah i think we're needy guys there's no question about that i think both of us or all three of us would agree with that uh but me when i begin to look at the numbers from last year you're 29th in the league on defense you're 24th in the league on third down defense you're 29th in the league on red zone defense i think you got to affect that side of the football i want to i want to affect the defensive side so i'm looking defensive end yep i think that's no surprise to anybody corner yep would yep. be number two for me and then if one of those really good offensive linemen fell then I, I would that's certainly something you consider but i like those two defensive groups suggested right away yeah definitely pass rush and getting after the quarterback sacks is something that has to improve next season dj where are you going position group wise i mean it's hard to disagree with our because it's a need it's something that we all know has has happened 18 sacks last year, last in the league. That is a direct point to say we got to go get some guys who can get after quarterback and affect the quarterback. And then, like Arch mentioned, guys on the back end. I know we signed a few guys here uh, in free agency, but you need that standout guy on the outside as well to go along with AJ Terrell. They didn't get the pass rusher. So I think both those positions will be absolutely spot that I think Falcons fans will have to key in on on these drafts. Interestingly enough, we have two quarterbacks on this side of the table that took <laughs> snaps from offensive linemen that did not mention offensive line. Now, I was not the defensive player. However, I was a long snapper and tight end that spent many a times in meeting rooms with offensive linemen as well as tight ends. And my position group is offensive line. I just feel like if this offense is going to score more points, it has to be fixed in the trenches. They've yeah. got to start adding more personnel that can beef up that position, that can bring more productivity. And this is a good year at the top of the draft for a few tackles. Again, it all depends on how things shake out, what ends up going on with draft day trades. But I feel like if you got a guy like Marcus Mariota, there's people that are mocking Malik Willis as a guy maybe a year or two down the road for Atlanta. Or if it's a wide receiver, a Garrett Wilson, a Jamison Williams, those guys cannot be effective unless the quarterback has time to get them the football. So I believe offensive line is the position group that right, they need to like start with. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm just saying. I your blood, did bro. spend a little bit of time there before <laughs> I went to college. All right, so let's dive into it a little bit more. Arch, I'm going to come back to you. We, you mentioned that it's a needy roster. That's true. When you don't make the playoffs, when you don't play up to the standard that you 
the coaching staff and the front office sets, you have needs that need to be addressed in the offseason. This is one of the biggest times in the NFL draft. So let's get into a little bit more of the needs. You talked about pass rushing and corner, but where else can Atlanta address in this draft? Not just day one throughout the entire draft to help them for next season. Well, certainly wide receiver is going to come into play at some point. I know another a number of people have mocked Atlanta for a wide receiver in the first round, and I could see why they would do that. There's some good ones in this draft. The thing that I love about the draft from a wide receiver standpoint is there's some really good ones day two, maybe even day three that you could get that probably come in and immediately start here or one of the three receivers on this yep. team. Yeah. So I think that it's a deep enough class where I'm not sure you have to squeeze the trigger that early on something like that. But wide receiver certainly immediately comes to mind for me as that need, and then it would become offensive line for me. Yeah, you know, obviously we've got the question marks with Calvin Ridley. A couple of guys that have come in during free agency period, DJ, that maybe end up factoring into that wide receiver room. But as we know, the, every position group grows between signing people in the offseason, then the draft, then undrafted free agents. A wide receiver room could end up having 13 guys in training camp that gets whittled down to five or six once yeah. you get to the active roster. Outside of wide receivers, where else do you think the team needs to address? I think we talked about earlier in that, that, that secondary part of it where if you get a guy on the other side, I know we signed Casey Hayer. He's an outstanding player. Been around 10 years. going to be tremendous for A.J. Terrell on, on that other side and bringing that experience and all. But we talk about a few guys that could go at number eight or a few guys who can be in that top 15 who are standout players in this draft who come in with that pedigree of there's some dogs. They're going to get after you. They fit the same kind of mold as an A.J. Terrell. So I love the fact that you brought back a couple guys on the back end. You still got some guys who are young in this secondary who you drafted the last couple years. But there's still another guy that I think if you combine them with Casey Harry, you combine them with A.J. Terrell, and you get one of those guys in that corner spot, you're going to be set up for a long time, especially in this league where you know they want to throw the football. We talked about – Arch just talked about the, the amount of receivers coming into this league, the amount of receivers that are already in this league that are very dynamic. If you've got some guys on the outside that can cover, and we know just like everybody else, you play a lot of nickel and dime in this league. Mm -hmm. So you need – Tons of corners who can play inside, play outside, and there's someone in this drive that can do that. All right, guys, I'm going to bounce this one back at you because we, we kind of talked about it a few minutes ago, the fact that I'm sitting across the table from two quarterbacks, all right? Remember, Matt Ryan, the franchise quarterback, was traded away. The answer, at least for now, short-term potentially, has been Marcus Mariota. Neither of you guys mentioned quarterback, mm -hmm. Okay. I want to know why, and I'm sure some viewers and listeners also want to know why you're not targeting a quarterback right now. You want to go? You want me to go? Go ahead, Arch. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he and I may feel very similar about this. I think what you've done, what Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith have done, is they went out and got a guy that's got a chip on his shoulder. Yep. And I think you're going to be able to look at guys like Carter coming off the edge or Evans or who are Casey Hayward. These are guys that are not just trying to extend their careers – People have kind of given up on him. Mm -hmm. and I One think year you, prove it deals, right? I, exactly. Yep. And I yep. think Marcus Mariota comes in here. He's only 28 years old. He didn't turn 29 until the middle of the season. This is a young dude who was taken really early. Go back to look at the first couple of years of his, of his career in Tennessee. He was solid, if not Pro Bowl-esque. He was pretty good. Uh, injuries and some things got to him. Maybe a confidence scenario where he lost his job to Tannehill. He's been backing up with the Raiders for the last two seasons. He's healthy. This dude's coming in with a chip on his shoulder. I think he's going to play really good football. I think we're in a solid spot there. Now, is the future secure? He could be the future. He's only 28 years old. Right. But let him prove that he's not the future. Uh, and, and, sure, you're going to add maybe a guy or two, maybe a veteran out there before we get to training camp. We know with Felipe Franks is coming back. But I think that this guy comes in with a, a mode, if I'm going to prove that I des – I deserve to be the guy here. I should be one of the 32 guys that starts every Sunday, and I think he's going to get it done. I think it's a great point, Arch. DJ, sorry to interrupt you because he mentioned the word confidence, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if you could put yourself in Marcus Mariota's head and you can say, I used to play for this guy. Yeah. My former coach came no and got me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, how much does that boost his confidence for him to come in? Granted, the proof is in the pudding. He's got to put the production Absolutely. once he gets on the field. Right. But he's got to come into this saying, this is my job. The biggest thing that I take away from that, yeah, you love the confidence, but I think it's the maturity part of it as well that he even admitted during that time I wasn't doing the things that I should be doing to maximize my potential. And then now I think it works both ways with Arthur Smith and Marcus Mariota is, okay, that first time it didn't work out 
the way they both wanted to work out, but I think they both have learned from that situation. And now Arthur Smith looks at it like, okay, now I know how to better prepare this guy going into this mm-hmm. next season. And he also mentioned, hey, I didn't go out and play my best football then. Mm-hmm. And Arch mentioned he's been backing up and uh, for the Raiders for the last two years. This guy has – he's learned a lot. He's matured during his time. He's already trying to find ways – to have that bond with his teammates now. Getting with the offensive linemen, trying to go out to eat, trying to f- figure out these guys. But now, like you mentioned, there's a chip on this guy's shoulder to prove to people that he is still that top quarterback that he was when he first got to Tennessee. So this marriage, I think, is going to be a little bit different because they both have learned, okay, here's a different couple ways that we can expand the things that he can do well. And now we come into a situation that he wants to prove it even more. Yeah, and you guys say second chances. The NFL is known for second chances at the quarterback position. Think about guys like Alex Smith, mm-hmm. Jared Goff, even a guy like Ryan Fitzpatrick. I mean, he's right. probably gotten 17 second chances, but he's stayed in the league. I mean, how and about he's Tannehill? Been able, exactly. I mean, Tannehill I mean, as well. Unbelievable. Um, so those are uh, great points. I just wanted to hear from our quarterbacks as to why quarterback was not a little bit more of the discussion. I think it's a great explanation. Before we wrap this up, DJ, let's make this another quick hitter. We talked about the needs. I want you to rank the needs. So one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, whatever it is. In your opinion, rank the needs that Atlanta needs to address in this draft. I think the needs are, are one, two on the defense side of the ball. Getting to the pack, getting to the quarterback and pass rushers number one and for one thing I want people to clarify or understand is when we say pass rush, we're not just thinking about just a defensive end. We talked about a guy yeah. like an outside linebacker who can put his sure. hand in the ground and absolutely sure. rush the passer, yeah. but also be a guy who can stand up and be an, an off-the-ball kind of defender. So a pass rusher can be an outside linebacker or somebody who can put their hand in the dirt. Pass, pass rusher is absolute number one. And for me, I think it has to be – I mean, number two, it has to be uh, the secondary. All right, pass rush, secondary. How about you, Arch? I'm, I'm walking in lockstep with him. It's pass it's, – it's a defensive end, it's corner, and it's wide receiver. Got it. All right, and if anybody's curious about mine, mine's offensive line and pass rush. So we are both – we all of us are pretty much addressing the lines of scrimmage, which you have to be strong in yep. the NFL if you're going to find success. This episode in part brought to you by The Home Depot. Everything you need for your next home improvement project is just a tap away on The Home Depot app. The Home Depot app digital toolbox gives you access to how-to guides, project calculators, and image search so you'll know exactly what you need to pick up. With the tap of the finger, you can rent and reserve the right tools for the job. Also, browse through millions of items from top brands that you can have delivered right to your door. Whatever your project, Find exactly what you need with the Home Depot app. Download the Home Depot app today. All right, we're going to dive into actual selections. All right, this is the um, Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. You are now on (laughs) the clock, Dave Archer. We need your selection. Who are you picking at number eight in the 2022 NFL Why you make draft? That face? Why you make that face? Well, it, 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 <laughs> this is going to be one of those hedge type. Op- this is where you're put completely in the microscope, right? Okay. I think three edge rushers are going to come off the board before Atlanta gets to pick. And I think because of that, the top ranked corner is going to be sitting there, mm. and I'm going a little. I'm going to put a little sauce on okay. the defense. I'm okay. going Sauce Gardner at 6'3", Saucy. 190, a guy that Saucy. loves to play physical. He's an up in your face guy. He can play both zone and bump and run man to man. Watch this guy tackle. He's got a little nastiness about him, uh, but he's got great size. Got tremendous ball skills in his three years at, at uh, Cincinnati. Eight interceptions. He's a guy that's taken it to the house on interceptions. This is a guy that would be a great compliment. No offense to Casey Hayward. I think Hayward will come in here, be a great veteran influence on mm-hmm. anybody that's in that room. Yep. But I think you got those. You got AJ Terrell and Sauce Gardner side by side with one another. I like the way that looks. Yeah, I don't think you have to apologize to anybody. You get somebody like uh, <laughs> Sauce Gardner, that's like your future out on the outside as a pillar. And I mentioned this back a few months ago. I got a chance to call the Cincinnati SMU game, which was like late in the season, right? SMU came into Cincinnati, was ranked. That was one of the teams that could potentially knock off Cincinnati. So I start reading in preparation for the game, and all I'm seeing is about is Sauce Gardner doesn't give up a touchdown. Sauce Gardner, this, oh, that, yeah. and the other. Yeah. And I start watching tape on it, and I was like, yeah. this dude is it for does. real. Yeah, and then just watch his ascent and his name going to be called in the first round of the NFL draft to back up what you just said 159 coverage snaps Mm -hmm. 
zero, zero touchdowns. touchdowns given up. There you go. Is that a guy you'd like to have on your roster? All right, DJ, you are now on the clock. Do you want me to stall a little bit so you can? I mean, because you, know, you got those crumpled no, no, up no, no. notes. Well, see, I went back because I wanted to see more of this this Sauce Garden and some more crazy stats he had. I mean, targeted thirty times this year. 60 yards total. <laughs> How'd you give him 60 yards total throughout the year? I mean, it's he's an unbelievable player. Sorry, go ahead, Rex. Sorry, sorry. No, okay, so we're going to try it again. All right, so that is um, – Dave Archer has Sauce Gardner going to the Atlanta Falcons. Now right. it's your turn. Who okay. is going to the Atlanta Falcons at number eight in a 2022 NFL draft? Ooh, it's tough because I've waffled back and forth with this pick. And one of them is an offensive guy, one is a defensive guy. And because of what my man Dave Archer just said, three are going to be gone from that defensive end spot. And I think we have talked and stressed that we need somebody to rush the passer. Why not go get the ACC Defensive Player of the Year yes. who had 12 sacks, 22 tackles for loss this year, transferred from Georgia, couldn't get on the field, comes to Florida State and dominates in Jermaine Johnson. I mean, he would be an unbelievable pick, I think, right there at eight and brings immediate impact to that off to that defensive line and gives you so much versatility. I mean, this guy has a quick first step. He does an awesome job of getting up. I mean, he plays the run really well. There's not many things that you can dislike about this guy. So I would love to see him in this red and black. Iron Man guy, too. It's a great selection by Shock, former dog that got his opportunity, as, as Shock said, down at Florida State, 12 sacks this year. Iron Man, too. 60 snaps a game mm -hmm. he played at Florida State. He wasn't coming off the field. He stayed out there and played. Not only does that show that he is an every-down player, but it shows what the NFL wants to see, durability. No doubt. A guy that's going to be on the field because one of those high draft picks that spends his career in a training room doesn't you. really get you any better <laughs> as a football team. Yeah. If anybody's curious my selection at number eight i'm gonna go got, icky ikwanu from Ooh, nc state i told you i'm one. addressing the offensive good line one. this now here's what i will tell you this from from some of the stuff that i got a chance to watch on him he's probably stronger as a run blocker he's probably stronger interior right now he played dude. out on the on the perimeter as a tackle. i think he's a little bit rough right now to, to contribute but in atlanta he doesn't necessarily have to contribute that tackle right now yeah. he could just focus on being a great interior offensive lineman set the tone be that guy that helps move the line of scrimmage and then if later on in his career he's shown the ability that he can be a great pass protector then maybe you slide him out to the edge but right now I think he is one guy that helps solve a little bit of that issue on the interior of the offensive line a guy that you can plug in from day one and he's going to bring you some nastiness this guy likes to drive people down the field he doesn't just go one or two yards mm -hmm. he is literally going to stay with you until the whistle blows maybe even a little back after into the whistle. The whistle. <laughs> that's exactly right you're uh, exactly right so, just to back up what you're saying 476 throw attempts for nc state he gave up three sacks all year long so he may be a little further along than people are giving credit for but what sticks out when you watch it is he loves to mash people he's a mm, nasty dude he is. that's grinders. what i want in front of exactly. grinders, no doubt exactly. oh, dave you're a quarterback you got you got a sneak to get one yard which direction are you gonna go i want to call him mr Equanu. If he's gonna be, I'll, I'll call him that if he wants to be nasty that's quarterback good. sneak let's just say he wears number 64 and i'm going behind him that's okay right. i'm going behind him so there's a few players Players that we feel like could end up impacting the Atlanta Falcons day one after the first day of the NFL draft. All right, let's take a little bit of a step sideways, not backwards, and talk some about the free agency additions. I don't want to, I don't want to minimize the importance of those guys, as we know that free agency started about a month and a half ago. Atlanta didn't necessarily make any huge splashes, but DJ, let me start with you. A guy that Atlanta either signed from a new team or re-signed from the current team, because I will tell you this: that Terry Fontenot said some of your best free agent acquisitions are guys that are currently in your building. Yeah. You know they fit the fabric of your culture and you keep them in that jersey. So which ones do you feel like one, maybe two guys help move the meter on the free agency side? You know, I think we talked about him already a couple times and I love the fact you bring over Casey Hayward, a 10-year vet in this league who's seen it, who's done it, who's been around a lot of different defensive schemes and now he gets a chance to to, to kind of mentor one of the top guys I think we all believe in the National Football League and A.J. Terrell. So I love the fact you bring in his experience on that back end along with A.J. Terrell, along with some of these other guys who are trying to find themselves in the National Football League. You got a Richie Grant who is trying to find his way. Here's a guy who's been around some of the top safeties in the league. Just, you know, 
coming from over there with the Chargers, where they got a really nice safety over there that he can teach you, hey, this is some of the stuff this guy did in game yep. that allows him to be successful. I love the fact you bring in a guy of his caliber who is, I think, a character guy inside the locker room, but also would teach these guys so much on the field as well as off the field. Yeah, maybe that's one of the areas that, that Atlanta has missed on the secondary is that veteran presence mm, that no can doubt. help mentor guys. Because you think about just a few years before Terrell was there, the, guy, the Keanu Neals, the Ricardo Allens, like that would have been that veteran mentorship that could have really taken his career to the next level. It's a good point. Maybe Hayward's the guy that ends up doing that. Not to mention that, not to say that's his only role right, for Atlanta. Right. He's going to go out there and compete no for a starting position. Absolutely. But he can also help the team in the secondary in the same breath. They Dave, how about you? What free agency acquisition do you like? Yeah, I'm looking at three guys to me, and I, I talked about the chip on the shoulder, and that's what I love what Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith have done is they've gone and got guys that aren't necessarily trying to extend their careers. They've got, they're going to get guys that maybe didn't quite get their shake wherever they were, but they've got a chip on their shoulder to say, I belong in this league, and I belong at the highest possible level. It starts with Marcus Mariota. I think that that's an outstanding yep. hire at the, at the quarterback position. I think Demir Bird is another guy mm -hmm. that has speed, that can catch the rock, was in Chicago, mm -hmm. knows this system. He's going to come in, immediately fit in and play. He's got some speed, and he's a guy that really – kind of in the mix of kind of getting caught up in numbers, he might have an opportunity here yep. to step into the stardom. And the, my number one guy is Lorenzo Carter. Okay. How about the yep. number – how about bringing the dog back home? He's excited as he can be to be Are back in Georgia. He's going to come off the edge. We need edge pressure. I think look for Lorenzo Carter to be a pretty good addition. Yeah, Carter well. was his classic example of somebody that did not throw up great numbers at his previous stop, but he's got the ability. Everybody's talking about his ability, mm -hmm. and if he gets in the right position, the right system, that he could take off. I mean, it could be a guy that pushes close to double-digit sacks, which – I mean, would you say that they had last year? 18. 18. <laughs> yeah. Double digit from one guy would be pretty, <laughs> That'd be pretty good. nice. That'd be good. So they talked a about a couple of new faces. I'm just going to mention to me what I thought were a couple of guys that are sticking around were great moves. No, how about Young Way Koo? Mm. I mean, the guy that new was the, probably no the most automatic the player. Special teams guy. Kick, kick, yeah. kick, special kick, teams kick. player. <laughs> special one, teams yeah. player here. <laughs> okay. Y'all weren't laughing at all the points he scored for Atlanta <laughs> last year, though. No, Let we me were just say that. All right, and then Cordero uh, Patterson. I mean, we talked about this yeah. one at the end of the season, guys, and it was like we felt it was a no-brainer. Yeah. He said that he wanted to stay here. True. He wanted to play here. And if you are a head coach and a general manager and you got a guy that impacted your team in such a positive way last year and he came out right away and said, I want to be on this team. Yes, he did then that's the guy that you want to sign. He's not the one that's going to be non-committal because he wants to go out in the market and he wants to see if he can get an extra 5, 10, 15 million from somebody else. He said, I know what my value is here. Mm -hmm. I know what this last season did for my career and I want to start something special. So to me, you talk about two guys that were maybe the most consistent all season for Atlanta last year are coming back in their jerseys and hopefully you bring some compliment pieces around them so it can be even better. Yeah, so that's there's a good, that's a good call. Right? There's that's a look a right there at some free agency acquisitions and guys staying around that we felt like were good moves from this franchise. All right, last topic before we let you guys go is going to be that sleeper pick. Everyone in NFL circles will tell you the guys that you draft late in rounds, even undrafted guys that come in and make an impact, kind of define your tenure, tenure, especially in the front office, right? If you're Terry Fontenot, you find a guy in the sixth round that comes in and he starts and he ends up being a pro bowler, you dominated the draft, right? Because sure. the value that you got. So maybe not sixth round, Dave, but let me start with you. Not necessarily a household name. Mm -hmm. Who's somebody that you like that could come in and make an impact? Well, there's the first guy that comes to mind for me is a guy out of Western Kentucky named D'Angelo Malone. And I don't know if you know about him. Maybe you do. If you've been doing your research, you'd probably do know about him. This is a guy that's probably a late day three, day two pick. So he's probably going to go in the first three rounds, but probably in the third round somewhere. 59 tackles for loss, 32 and a half sacks. Uh, eight force fumbles. He's an outside linebacker like Shock was talking about. That edge rush may not come from a defensive end. It may come from a guy you're talking about, like a linebacker steps up that you get in that second, third, fourth round that could come off the edge of a specialized passer. 6'4", 240. He'll have to work on some of his abilities against some of these tackles in this league. But I think this guy could be a diamond in the rough. Could You could fall into 
uh, you know, a Von Miller type player that can come off the edge that's used to getting to the quarterback. 32 and a half sacks in his five years at Western Kentucky. You know, and, and like the interesting that. part about guys like that, too, is is a lot of times, number one, they're not instantly rich, meaning that they're done having to worry about money for the rest. Like sometimes these NFL players draft in the first round, like their life's pretty much set, right? So he knows he still has to grind it every day. He knows he's likely going to have to play on special teams, but he also knows I'm one injury away from getting on defense and earning a starting position, right? Yep. And so those are the guys we talked about chip on our shoulder the one year contract prove it guys maybe your mid rounders are also like you know what i thought i should have been a second rounder and i got drafted in the fifth round well i'm gonna go show them that i'm a second round player with my play on the field so Grady, it's a great Grady point. Jarrett, right Grady that's, Jarrett. It. that's it dj who do you got so i'm gonna jump into a conference that arch knows really well i mean he's well versed at all conferences we know that but this conference here i know <laughs> that he knows and i'm going perry on winfrey from uh oklahoma Ooh, defensive yeah. tackle yep six four two ninety run a four eight and I'm going to be honest, I didn't see much of him during the season, just didn't watch a lot of Oklahoma. But I started watching him at the Senior Bowl, and he started to stick out for me. He ended up being the Senior Bowl MVP. He's got an 86-inch wingspan, which if he gets drafted with the third longest wingspan in NFL history, that's pretty cool to have to be that long. But this is a guy that, that you can love, can put his finger in the dirt, is a tough physical guy, can get upfield and really be a master on the inside. Guys, we always talk about getting edge rush from the outside. How about pushing the middle of the pocket? Me and Arch hate from the exactly. middle of the pocket to be collapsed on this. He's one of those type of guys I think could be that kind of guy. Whether he goes third, fourth, fifth round, we don't know. But he's one of those guys I think that you got to keep your eye on. He could be a, a big physical guy on that inside that can help you. That's yeah, the, the interesting thing is is I always kind of make this joke, and, and, and I think it's true, but – you know, I would say Big 12 where defense is optional because there's always <laughs> so many sports, yeah. uh, you know, points scored. But you still see a lot of really good individual players that come out of the Big 12 and they end up making a huge impact. And maybe Winfrey is one of those guys. I know you're right. The defense has improved and hopefully it will for in Oklahoma. <laughs> hopefully it will in Oklahoma with Venables uh, being there yes, now. Will. <laughs> defense will not be optional with him at the helm. I'm going to talk about one more guy that's probably going to end up being a third or fourth round pick. So he's not necessarily a sleeper. But we're going back to Cincinnati, and I'm going to go with wide receiver Alec Pierce. This guy is 6'3", mm -hmm. okay, ran a 4'4'1 at the combine, and he jumped 40 and a half in the vertical. Hey, so man. what that tells me, 6'3", but you put him down in the red zone, he's got that ability to go up over the top and make those 50-50 catches mm. and come down and score points. So and it's not just like he's a possession receiver. He's still got the speed to get downhill and be able to take the top off a of defense, but he's not necessarily one of those guys you're thinking is going to be your number one or two. He might be a three or four, but he could still be a really effective three mm. or four. So we've already talked about Sauce Gardner and Alec Pierce, and we haven't even mentioned Desmond Ritter. Oof. We didn't even get to a quarterback conversation. That's three really good players that are coming out of Cincinnati. Don't forget Sanders, the edge player, Absolutely, too. yeah. So Cincinnati is showing. And those guys, just to me, they come from that blue-collar yeah. mentality. They're not going to come in and be divas. No. I think those guys are just going to come in and work, and they're going to help your football team get better. That's what they had to do the whole time. They, they, they got disrespected the whole time in college. Time yeah. In yeah. college. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's all that we got here. I hope you guys enjoyed our little pre-draft preview. We threw out some names. We threw out some topics, some position some groups. Some picks. Some picks. Yeah. yeah. We Christmas is coming, baby. It's on <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> That's it. All right, just a couple of quick notes. We will be back on Thursday night. We'll give you a quick kind of summary of the who the Atlanta ended up with in day one. Maybe it ends up being two guys. You just never know what Maybe. happens on draft night, okay? So we'll be we back them, right? uh, so, after hey, the yeah. first round and give you our thoughts on how Atlanta did on day one of the draft. But also check out the Falcons' final whistle as they will give you coverage to give you their thoughts on how everything shakes out for the Atlanta Falcons in day one of the NFL draft. That's going to do it. Fellas, great to see you guys Good once you, again. Boys. Let's do it again Tell here us. in a few nights. Yes, sir. All right? And we enjoyed you coming back uh, to be with us as – Continue to uh, pull us up on all the different avenues that you get your podcast. Apple, uh, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, AtlantaFalcons.com, or wherever you can find us. We appreciate it. And come back and find us for more on Thursday night. That's going to do it for DJ Shockley, Dave Archer. I'm Derek Rackley. Take care. This is the Atlanta Falcons Audible presented by AT&T.